What's good, YouTube family? It's your boy S Crab Blends back again with another barber tutorial. And today we're gonna do a number one on the side, blending into the top with a little high taper on the side, taper out the back. As you can see, this one's gonna be a challenge, man. If you look in the taper area, it's already kind of patchy and over the ear there. His hair is kind of sparse in those areas, so that I know that probably as I get a little higher, it's going to also have that same effect. As I'm hitting it with the number three, I can see that there's some light spots already in there. Um, and that's okay. We're going to work with it, do the best we can. So I'm starting off with a number three in the parietal ridge area dropping down in the back so that he can still have some uh, weight to comb down and as you guys know i'm not trying to do a perfect cut at first if you've seen my technique you know a lot of times we got to move quicker in the barber shop so i'm just trying to lay a foundation and then i come back you know in and do the detail work so I like to try to lay a good foundation in 20 minutes. Detail for 10. Uh, if you know we're under the gun and we need to be done in 30 minutes per appointment. So there again, I did a number three in the parietal ridge area, just kind of going straight up with it, not really worrying about the top bulk. Uh, and then I dropped down to a number two open. So we're gonna do a two open all the way around the head underneath that and I wanted to show you guys the whole process that I do a lot of times you guys may see one side then the back and then the other side however that's not how I cut uh, when I'm not recording but we do that so you you know we don't have to keep adjusting the camera so on and so forth so we went ahead and did a number three probably closed then I did the two open all the way around then two close all the way around. Now I have a one and a half on there and we're going all the way around with that as well. And it'll be a one and a half open. Then we'll probably close it and do a one and uh, a one and a half close all the way around. And I'm just following that same uh, pattern as far as how I want that to drop down in the back. I just kind of follow that there again. I don't care how ugly the cut looks. I just know that if I can get the hair where I want it, I can come back later and do the detail work. Also with the hair up top, not really worried about all that hanging over because I can hit it with clipper over comb. This is my thought as I'm working. So now I'm doing the number one open and then we'll close the number one and clean up everything on the bottom. So this is called a fade down technique. So I started with the three, then I went drop down a little bit doing it did a two and a half open or excuse me two open then i did the two close one and a half open one and a half close one open and one closed and then that's whenever i can line them up and do the the taper on the side and the back then we can worry about the clipper over comb on top and all the beard and all that good stuff but i'm not worried about you know dark spots and stuff I'm just trying to get a good basic foundation laid and some people they want to you know work on you know perfecting one side getting it as blurry as possible and then do the back and getting it as blurry as possible doing all the details and that's fine as well but when you're in a shop and there's a lot of volume and you're constantly busy you want to move as quick as you can so I try to go ahead and keep the same guard on my clipper as long as possible. So I'll go ahead and, and do that guard all the way around. Then if I use a different guard, I'm gonna do that guard all the way around. So I don't have to keep switching guards out all the time and uh, lay the foundation, come back in, clean it up later. So even now, if you look, you can see a pretty significant dark line. Not worried about it. You know, there are there is a dip in that area towards the back over the ear where most people have nice little indentions, uh, which is creating a, a nice little dark line. But we'll come back in and do our best to knock that out. Once again, we're wrapping it up with the closed one all the way around the bottom. And now we're going to set our high taper guideline. I like to start from right 
at the corner of the ear and just go all the way up to the corner of that uh, C cup area. So as you can see, I lightly touched the front lineup um, to kind of bring it forward and keep it as uh, natural as possible. So I set my second guideline with a open blade, no guard, and then I just start closing that as needed, working my way down. Now I'm coming in with a zero guard because we've already used the one and that zero guard is open and I'm just taking it up, trying to knock out these dark spots there again, because it is a little patchier, there's going to be light spots where the hair is not as dense, but then those denser spots are going to be darker hair. So I'm going to use the corner of my blade to tap at the dark spots as I work my way up to kind of give the illusion that this thing is blended uh, better. And sometimes there again, if you use a guard or no guard, say open or whatever, and you still have patches, it's because of the, the separation of the hair, the density of different places in the hair where there again, some hair is grouped together really thick and then some spread out and it gives the illusion that it's uh, spots on the head. So we want to kind of go in with the corner of our, our blade or guard to tap at those dark spots in order to lighten them up so it gives a good transition. Now we went ahead and did the uh, line up over the ear down towards the back. Now I'm gonna come in, set my first guideline on the back taper, clean that up really nice. Then we'll hit it with the trimmer <coughs> as well, just like we did the side. And then we'll come in with uh, more than likely an open blade there we go and I'm using the gamma ergos right now um, you know if you watch the review you know that, that I like these for detail work I, I don't know that I would use it for the whole haircut um, you know I, I, I like it for the detail tell work you know but um, I don't know that it can do everything that I want to do with a haircut you know that I cut a lot of hair on top with uh, like the clipper over the finger instead of my shears um, I use a lot of clipper over comb I don't know that it can do all of that but it is great at detail work if you're looking for a detail clipper uh, but if you get it and you don't like it don't blame me I'm telling you everybody has their own opinion I like it for detail work there have been people hitting me up that are like my god I love this clipper it's amazing Matt Gifted Hands uh, is actually wanting to buy these from me he is in love with this clipper. Uh, today I cut next to Basio and Basio has been using it all day. And he's like, dude, I really like this clipper. Um, you know, but then I had someone that hit me up and was like, hey, I bought the clipper. It sucks. I hate it. I wasted my money. And uh, they were like, it's nothing like the fast feeds. And honestly, I don't think it's nothing like the fast feeds either. You know, I, I didn't compare it to any other clipper. I just said I like it for detail. And I do. So anyways, as you've seen, I went in with the open blade. I closed it on my way down to the line and just knocked that line out. Then I went in with that zero guard, uh, you know, and set the second guideline, just trying to blend into that one. And then I closed it as I worked my way down to that, that guideline. And now I went back to the open blade just to tap, you know, and, and remove any line and get that blend nice and blurry as you can see a lot of the tricks that i use man i use the corner of the clipper and i'm focusing on dark little spots and i just tap at those dark spots until i thin them out basically uh, to get a blurrier looking transition once again we already laid the foundation in that foundation area it still looks a little patchy and dark and and you know lines or whatever but as you can see, we're cleaning up the bottom now. We're doing the detail work, getting everything looking good. And then we'll come back in and focus on that. But we were able to move quicker and, and just hit the foundation and now work the details. What you do on one side, you do on the other. So you guys seen it. Um, now I'm coming in with sheer over comb and I'm starting to hit those dark areas or the dark lines with the sheer over comb. And I may use sheer over comb all the way around the head. Sometimes I may use it in specific areas where I feel like I need to use it more to have more control to hit 
the little dark spots, you know. And there again, with the, I just use the tip of my shears a lot of times and just tap out uh, dark spots and lines, kind of like a thinning shear type motion or a blending shear. So now we're doing some clipper over comb. I like to go ahead and make horizontal strokes first, and then I come back and do vertical strokes. And I'm just kind of uh, putting the bottom of the comb right at the level of my number three guard. And then I'm just going up with those vertical strokes, kind of shaping it into the length that I want it to. If I want it to go straight up, then I hold my comb tighter to the head uh, at the top of the teeth area. Or if I want it to go out a little bit and have some weight in that area, then I keep that thick bottom portion of the, the comb that right now that the clipper's touching. I keep that closer to the head and I turn the teeth out towards me. Um, but that's how you gauge the length of it. It's kind of like shaping, you know, and, and you just keep working at it until you feel like those two are, are tied together, that there's a nice transition. And, uh, and I just keep combing it down to see how it looks. And I hit it with that clipper over comb. Now I'm coming in with my thinning shears. Some people call them blending shears and they're blending shears for a reason because you can get in there and blend out lines and really uh, tie a fade together if you know how to use them. And for me, as you can see, I usually don't use the whole shear. Uh, if I'm doing any kind of detail work with my shears or with my blending shears, it is just usually the tip that I'm using. And you know, I'll go around and do that for a little while on that side. Uh, but for sake of time, I, I cut that out. And before I'm all done, I'll spin them around, look at it, and I may do it some more. But now, same thing. I kind of did some horizontal strokes uh, just to kind of knock out some of that weight. And then I come in with those vertical strokes to work on more detail of just kind of getting those, uh, that three guard to transition into the top. And with this fade, I took the, the one a little bit higher. So the three, two, one, they're all compressed pretty good. As you can see, like I said, I came back in now tying the back uh, and the sides together. And I'll just keep working at hitting, uh, you know, that blend area with the thinning shears. So it all looks like it's tying together. I want the gradients to flow down together but also as it's flowing straight down on the side from the three, two, one, you know, to the ball taper, I'm also flowing down at an angle in the back. So I got to keep that in mind. So watch as I'm doing that, I drop down lower in the back and start, you know, uh, hitting that, but I keep it full towards the, the top of the head, if that makes sense in the back there, because I do want to keep that darker. Now it was pretty heavy and dark spot around that occipital bone there. So I'm just going to keep on tapping at it and just, uh, where that real thick, heavy line is, I'll just keep tapping in those areas to like right there, just keep tapping to try to thin that out. I know that the link looking from the side, it all looks like it's smooth, but I'll keep hitting it to try to get that to really tie together. Uh, so now just doing a little light trim on the top. As you know, I like to stand from the back and I grab from the front middle and I just take it all the way back one section at a time. And then I'll do that on the other side and then I'll do it on the other side. And then once I've kind of made my way across the head, I will walk to the side of the head and then do the same process but on the side and like i'm doing right now and that's simply cross cutting a lot of people do all them cool sections and parts honestly um you know if i was going to do a show or something like that or there was a really specific cut where i needed to do that i would do it however um you know i usually don't now if the bangs are a little long i might do what i did right there um, to kind of give them the shape that i want because his uh, hairline was a little thin there i had just a little bit of color enhancement um, not much and, and he was very amazed at how natural his beard looked and his lineup just with that light color enhancement and he really liked that so there again after we style it i come back and i just uh hit you know as many dark spots as i can 
because of different dips and shadows you know it's not perfect but i feel like it looks really clean especially from where we started from so this is pretty much the fin finished product guys i do a last couple touches you know and, and just get them looking right clean the neck but that's it man i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial if you did give me some feedback make sure you like comment and subscribe and if you're not following me on instagram you can follow me at s period craft underscore blends for some amazing content there anyways god bless you guys we'll see you next time peace